um, a lecture uh, entitled Hacking the Electoral Law. Uh, he has a PhD in physics and is working in a as a consultant for a mid-sized U.S. software company. And what he plans to discuss, um, I believe, is how the Ministry of the Interior turns the fundamental election principles into their opposite without even asking the parliament. So if you could please give a warm uh, round of applause for our guest, Ulrich. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, my title is, um, of, of this talk is Hacking the Electoral Law, and um, what I'm going to explain over the next hour is that um, in, in Germany and probably um, most European countries, um, the administration, ad administration is about to turn fundamental election principles into their opposite. Now, using something for what it's not supposed to, to be made for, um, that is probably what you call hacking. Um, and, and I say um, the Ministry of Interior in Germany has hacked the electoral law, and the hacking tool is voting computers. Um, I'm, I'm going to um, give a brief overview on where we are at the moment, um, on terminology, on the status quo here in Germany and other European countries. Um, then um, I, I'll, I'll spend quite some time on fundamental principles of democratic elections. I'll compare um, what is in the Copenhagen Declaration of the OSCE member states, that is what European safe states have agreed to be democratic elections, and I'll um, show how that is implemented here in Germany. Um, now, many of, of the things I'm going to explain there might be obvious or might appear obvious, but they're not obvious enough for um, the politicians or the people in the administration um, to, to follow these principles. Um, then in the next um, part, I'm going to um, explain how the administration actually changes the principles in their opposite, what they're doing and, and how they do that. Um, I'm going to give some um, examples on statements that these um, people have made in the, in the past year. I'm going to touch upon um, voting machines used here in Germany and other European countries, which is NEDAP. Um, I'm also going to um, speak a bit about the digital pen, which is um, an, an optical device which is going to be launched in Hamburg next year. And I give some e-counting examples um, which are just picking up in, in Germany. Um, I'm going to, to talk about legal actions taken and on upcoming elections in Europe. Now on terminology, um, with, when I say e-voting, I mean electronic voting. So that can be anything offline, online, um, via the internet, in the election office, um, or remotely, using a private or public equipment. When I say e-counting, I'm talking about computer-assisted counting of paper ballots. So that is in an election office, uh, using a manual capturing of the votes, or using barcode scanners, and then after that, um, counting these votes um, electronically. Um, there's, there's some flavors of e-voting. Um, there's um, what we call DRE, direct recording electronics, and the machines currently used in, in Germany and many European countries are of such type. Um, so the, the NADAP devices you might have heard of, they are DRE type devices. Um, they capture the vote um, w without leaving an physical evidence of the vote. Um, and there are some devices which have a paper trail, but the ones in, in Europe, um, they don't. Um, and um, mainly in the US, there's optical scanners where you um, scan in um, paper ballots um, in, a, in, a, in an opt automated way. Um, but I haven't seen any of these uh, showing up here in Europe. Um, remote e-voting is internet voting. Um, that has been picking up over the last years. Um, Estonia launched um, it for regional elections last year, and we had a talk here last year um, in this conference. And there's pilots in Switzerland um, since 2004, and um, I, um, I just heard that the Netherlands are using um, e-voting for people who are living abroad. 
So more and more countries are switching to e-voting. Um, there's some early adapters. The Netherlands have been um, the, the, the front runner in Europe over the last years. India is very big. Um, they're using uh, e-voting e across the country. Um, so does Brazil. Um, Belgium has a penetration of about 40%. And um, um, the, the devices are getting more and more popular in countries like Venezuela, uh, USA. Um, Ireland has a bit of a specific situation. They've bought NEDAPs for the entire country, but they're not using them. Um, after an electoral commission um, ha has um, found them not to be suitable for democratic elections. And countries like Germany um, here and France and Kazakhstan are just picking up with um, penetration rates between 5 and 10%. Um, other countries are getting ready, Namibia, Poland. Um, and, and you can see that am among these, these uh, countries on, their, on, on, the, on the slide, there are quite some uh, countries which are not uh, known as front runners in e government. Um, internet voting, I just said that, is, ha has been used in Estonia. Um, uh, Latania is getting ready, and Switzerland has run several pilots. Um, in, in Germany, the decision to purchase an electronic voting machine is with the um, municipalities. So it's, um, there's no central procurement process, and that's responsible for the relatively low penetration of only 5%. Um, there's only one vendor currently um, certified in Germany, which is NEDAP. And um, there's rumors that ESNS, e ESNS is uh, prepared for entering the market. Um, the, the voting machines are in Germany currently used um, at both in national and in local elections. Um, NEDAPs are also allowed in some federal states um, like Nordrhein Westfalen, Hessen, Rheinland Pfalz, Brandenburg, Niedersachsen. Um, Hamburg is about to launch the digital pen. That's an, um, like an like oversized pen with, an, with some optics at the tip. And there's a pattern in the paper which is recognized by the, optic, by the optics. So the, the, the pen knows where it's writing. And, and that is then uh, processed digitally. Um, E-counting is entering through the back door. So there's, there's no real... Um, legal regulations on, on the use of e-counting um, has been used in regional elections in Hessen, Bayern, Baden-Württemberg, as far as I know, but, but there's very little to read about that, so um, I, I haven't, I'm not going to, to dive too deep into that. Now, this, this map is showing where e-voting has been used in Germany in, the last, um, in last year's national elections, and the size of the dot of the dots gives you an idea of um, the number of uh, machines used in a, in a city. So the, the, the big users are uh, Cologne at the very left with 600 devices and Dortmund with 300 devices. Um, and then there's some medium-sized cities like Koblenz or Cottbus. And uh, some of you might have been to Cottbus um, last October when they elected a new, new mayor. Now, um, election principles. The OSCE Copenhagen Declaration says lists, uh, a long list of requirements for um, democratic elections. It says elections have to be uh, free at re and at reasonable intervals. Um, at least one chamber, um, all seats in one chamber have to be freely elected. Um, the elections need to be universal and equal. Votes need to be cast secret. Um, votes need to be counted honestly. And um, there needs to be um, fair and free atmosphere for the political parties. Um, and you need uh, to allow observers. So uh, to the, 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 really the, the bullet points are free, universal, equal, uh, counted honestly, um, 
fair and observers need to be allowed. Now, how, how is that implemented in Germany? Um, there's Article 4, uh, 38 of the Constitution which says that, that the members of the parliament need to be elected in general, direct, free, equal and secret elections. And Article 41 says um, that elections are subject to scrutiny. So um, that basically implies um, they need to be verifiable and auditable because otherwise there's no point to, um, to, to challenge elections after they have, have been conducted. Um, Article 20 says that the, the Federal Republic of Germany is a democratic and social federal state and this democratic um, is, implies that uh, the, the parliament is elected and works and decides in a transparent manner in the public. That's not something I make up. That is something you'll find in, um, in, in uh, legal literature, um, for example, in the commentary on the election, electoral law or in commentaries on the um, basic law of the Bundesrepublik Deutschland. So transparency is, is, a, is a fundamental principle of elections. Um, and, and that materializes in the Federal Electoral Act um, where you have paragraph 10 which says that the electoral committees negotiate, consult and decide in public meetings and that in paragraph 31 the ballot is conducted in public. So ev everybody can observe the election um, from the beginning um, until the end including the counting and some of you have done so in, in Cottbus. Um, a couple of weeks ago. If you compare OSCE, Copenhagen Declaration, to German Constitu Constitution, you, you on both sides see things like universal or general, and um, on both sides you see free, so that uh, nobody has to vote under pressure. Um, in Germany, not in OSCE, you, you, um, you have direct elections, which means um, there's no um, committee in between, like, like in the US presidential elections. Um, but that's not a fundamental principle of democratic elections. It's just a flavor in Germany. Um, the need to be equal, so everybody has the same rights, both in active and passive voting. Election needs to be secret, um, audible, auditable and verifiable, and transparent in public or observable. So that, that is common sense. Uh, there's nothing to debate on that, uh, on these things. And, and that's pretty much you'll find pretty much the same in, in each uh, European or democratic country. Now, if you have a closer look at these principles, there are, some of them are conceptual, they define what democracy is, some of them are procedural. So, um, there's no value in secrecy of a ballot itself, it just ensures um, that, that the election is free. So, the conceptual, the dem democracy-defining principles are general, elections, free elections, equal elections, and if you want in Germany, direct. Um, they, they define um, the, the characteristic of your, of your um, politics. Procedural is what protects these principles, the secrecy of the ballot, um, the honest counting on report, uh, and reporting of the votes, and, and the fact that elections need to be observable and transparent. Um, so, if you have a closer look at secrecy, um, it, it enables the vote to make a free decision, it, it prevents any physical or social pressure on the voter, it prevents any vote selling and buying, and secrecy is not voluntary, it's, it's something that you um, can or cannot do. You, um, the voter must not be, uh, be able to prove what he has voted. Um, so the voting needs to be received free and that prevents the voter from selling his vote. If you look at transparency, um, it's about everyone can observe the election process and verify um, that first the secrecy of the election is ensured, that only voters can pass uh, can cast ballot papers and that only one vote is cast per voter that nobody has access to the um, ballot box or to the content of the ballot box before the end of the election, so that no 
additional votes get into the ballot box or no votes can, can be replaced. Um, it, it basically ensures the integrity of the, of the voting act. And um, there are some implications from the, that. One is um, that votes need to be counted immediately after the election in the public place. Um, so um, that, that there's no gap in, in transparency when somebody carries votes from A to B. And um, all this ensures the integrity of the election and um, it ensures that the election uh, can be verified without any trust into election officials. So it's, it's not the administration that certifies that itself conducted the vote in a, uh, the election in a, in, a trend, in a democratic manner. It is obvious to everybody because the election is taken in, in, in public. If you look at verifiability, it means that election results can be verified, votes can be recounted, and um, that there's evidence that the votes actually originate from the voters. If you put all this together, um, you have an election triangle of the three fundamental democracy-defining election principles, equal, fair, and general, and you have the procedural um, principles around it, verifiable, transparent, secret, which, which protect um, the core values in the inner. Now, when you take away one of the three outer ones, like secrecy or transparency of the election, um, then you're putting the, the inner core ones at risk. And that is what's actually happening, uh, happening now, when um, the electoral law gets hacked by the administration. What, what, what is the issue with black box voting? On the, on the left side, um, in a paper-based election, you, you have secret votes which you put in a ballot box. And um, at the end of the election, you open the ballot box, you take out the votes and you count them. Um, and as the ballot box is a passive device, the output is the input and um, all, all tampering to the ballots needs to be done in public because you can, you can verify that, that only voters put something in the ballot box and you can verify that the votes are counted appropriately because you can be, be there all day and, and wa watch the election officials um, running the show, right? And what's the difference to black box voting? In black box voting, you have secret votes being submitted to a black box voting computer which acts as the ballot box. And at the end, somebody presses a button and, and the votes are counted. So, so, so where's the difference? The difference is that the voting computer is an active device and the output might be the input, um, but it also might not be, as the processing is not observable. And in fact, if you are there in the, in the ballot office and watch the voting computer being operated, you can't tell the difference between power vote, where each of the secret ballot um, unchanged goes into the vote counting. You can't distinguish that from power fraud, where some of the votes just get dropped and um, other votes are added by, by this uh, voting computer. So in, in the end, um, a, a black box voting computer might count correctly and probably it does in most European countries, um, but in the end nobody can testify that or fa uh, falsify that. Um, in, the, in the end nobody can tell um, the whether the election has been run correctly or not. Um, and, and even if, if the election officials pretend that um, everything has been correct, um, they, in most, in, in, in most uh, situations, won't be able to actually tell because they can't look at the machine as well. In the end, trusting voting machine vendors is required and trust into the operators of the, the machines um, is required. And trust is not an appropriate principle to ensure election integrity. So who can we trust? Um, we, we might be able to trust people in elections, but, but it can't be that we have to. And um, my hypothesis is that there's no election system, no electronic election system um, that violates not at least one of these procedural 
voting principles, secrecy, transparency, verifiability. There, there, there have been some suggestions how to make that secure, but in the end, it all, um, um, it, it all um, puts one of these principles at, risks, at risk. Often it's secrecy, and people um, have to be able to, um, to, to, to um, prove how they have been voted, or it's not verifiable. And um, that is not acceptable because trust is not an appropriate measure to ensure election integrity. Have elections been tempered? Probably not. Um, in, in Europe, at least, uh, most election results have been um, at least close to what is expected. There's no evidence that any e-voting e has been tempered. But there's also no evidence that um, e-voting has been run correctly because you can't see into the box um, and, and, and the risk really we're running here is that e-voting allows centralized, automated, large-scale large tempering. With paper ballots, there might be tempering as well, um, but it's, it all has to be local, and um, it all has to be done in public. In, um, in, uh, with e-voting, this can all be done before the election and large-scale, and nobody would know. Now... Um, how do they actually do the hack um, if, if all these election principles are agreed between European countries and between um, um, lawyers? How, how do they do that? What is their approach? How can, how can black box voting be legal if it, it violates election principles like transparency and verif verifiability? If you look at... Um, how it is implemented in, in Germany, the, the election principles, you have at the very top, you have um, the, the basic law, the constitution, and there you have, things, there you have the, these um, principles like auditable, verifiable, general free, equal secret, and, and that can't be changed without a uh, two-third two majority in the, in the parliament. And there's, underneath there, there's the electoral act, which is something that can be decided by the parliament with a um, simple majority, and in this electoral act, it says um, the use of voting machines is permitted. It doesn't say that voting machines need to violate any of the election principles. And you would actually think that if you look at that, um, that um, it, is, it is obvious that when you use voting machines that you have to fulfill the other election principles as well. Um, and in fact, if you look at the electoral code, which is the Bundeswahlordnung, and which is um, something that is... Um, made by the Ministry of Interior, so by the administra administration without um, involvement of the Parliament. Um, there is actually, uh, it goes to further details, it says um, the ballot is conducted uh, in public and the res result is conducted in public and the secrecy of the ballot is mandatory. So how can they get into that system and, and, and um, and change it and, and take transparency and, and verifiability away. And the way they do it is they put a layer underneath and they say, uh, they, they implement something like a Bundeswahlgeräteverordnung, like a vote ma machine, a voting machine code, something that is made by the administration as well, and they say the use is permitted if the machine um, is licensed by the Ministry of Interior and the license requires a technical certification and a permission is required for the use of el elections. And what they then do is they become self-referential. They give out a license to use sp a specific device, and then they, they um, give the permission to use it in elections, and then they say, well, it has been licensed, licensed. It was permit we were permitted to use it in, in elections, um, and so it's legal. So they don't care about all that shit above. They just, um, they just keep moving and argumenting in this lower level. And um, I'll give an example in a, in a minute uh, on, on how they actually argue there. Now, um, a year ago, um, we, we knew that we had issues here with, with these election principles, but we didn't know how, how the... Um, the administration would, would argue. Now, um, we are, we're a step further this year. Um, 
we, we filed um, um, a complaint about the election, about the 2005 election with the uh, scrutiny um, committee of the Bundestag. And in, in May 2006, the Ministry of Interior replied to that um, complaint. And um, based on this statement of the Ministry of Interior, the Bundestag actually two weeks ago rejected um, our complaints um, following the arguments of the Ministry of Interior. That doesn't, doesn't come as a surprise. The Bundestag always um, re rejects complaints about elections and, and that's related to um, them being judged with them being involved as party. Um, and most European countries don't have um, an approach where scrutiny is actually run by the parliament itself, because in the end, the, the, the parliament members would need to say, I haven't been legally elected. Um, so that, that, that is not a very successful approach. And, and the next level then, the second level in Germany, is, is the constitutional court, um, where, where this is normally taken more serious. But, um, this is, this is where we are. But, but from these statements, we know how they argue, what their arguments are. And um, we can now go to the Constitutional Court. Now, here is, here's an excerpt from the um, decision of the Bundestag, which was issued two weeks ago. They basically say, um, NIDAP voting machines um, used in the 2005 election fulfill the legal requirements because they have been um, um, certified according to p paragraph 35 of, of the electoral code and um, the approval process has been followed so everything is okay. So it's legal because it's legal. It's self-referential. This, this argumentation doesn't really look at the issues um, w with the fundamental principles of elections. Now, they do make some statements on transparency and they say Transparency is actually not violated because um, the, vo the voting machines are used in public. So even if you can't look inside the box, um, you can look at it. So that is how p public elections or transparency is defined these days. Um, and, and they also say that, that because you can check the sum of all votes counted by the election machine, um, because you can check the sum against the, the, the vote, number of voters that actually vote, voted, um, you can check whether the result is correct. So don't, don't worry how the votes are con uh, distributed between the parties. If, if the total number is okay, the election is um, okay. More about transparency. Um, they say that votes are, are cast in context of um, com the competing principles of of um, ballot secrecy and election transparency. And these days where um, everything gets more technical, um, it's acceptable if, if not everybody can still observe um, how that happens. And um, if, if correctness has been tested in a defined procedure beforehand, then everything is fine. But that's not appropriate for elections. Um, there's some interesting comments on device security. Um, they say the software actually cannot be tampered with, or if the software is tampered with, um, it cannot impact the election result before they say, um, before the um, device is actually configured for an actual election, you don't know which part is on which but button. So um, how can you implement a software that, that moves votes around? Um, and then they say, after the configuration, the device is sealed, so um, if somebody wants to tamper, he needs to break the seal, the seal that, that broken seal would be noticed. So um, if somebody tampered with the software, you would know. Now, this argument is December 2006. It's after the NEDA pack in the Netherlands. Um, it's, it's wrong even from the non-technical view, because the, 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 um, you, you, you can't choose the sequence of the parties. Um, as you want, that's well defined by the electoral law. You have to, it's, it's dependent on the last election's result that you have four years ago. So even if you didn't have, have, have a clue about technology, you would be able to tell this argument is stupid. Um, now, if, if, um, if you um, 
um, at attend the next talk by Rob, um, you, you will learn more about um, the, the technical aspects uh, about, um, of, of this argument. It's, it's, it's crap, and um, they, they, they didn't hesitate a second to put that crap into their official statement. Bundestag on election integrity. Um, they say the ma manipulations could be probably done by the vendor, but, but that can't ha happen because the vendor is contractually and written, uh, writtenly binded to not doing so. So, uh, <laughs> um, tempering can't occur because it's for forbidden. So, uh, with that argument, you could even outsource elections to anybody who just, in writing, confirms that he wouldn't tamper. <clears throat> now, in terms of risk assessment, the Bundestag made some in interesting statements as well. Um, they said the replacement of the software of a voting machine is only a theoretical threat because it's un extremely unlikely that you, can, that you have two minutes to tamper with the voting machine in front of the election officials. But, but that is compared, that, that's similar to a scenario where you try to manipulate an elect, a paper-based election by stuffing the ballot box in front of the election officials. That, that is not what, what the threat is. The threat of, to, to democracy is um, the, 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 the threat from inside, um, that, that the people who handle the machine um, do the tampering. Now, most of what, what, I, what I said so far was on, on NEDAP, which is, which is currently used in, in Germany. Now, in Hamburg, they're introducing something new, and I briefly mentioned that before. That's the digital pen. It's, it's, the introduction in Hamburg is, is as, as often driven by a complex local electoral system where um, many votes need to be counted and uh, where votes can be spread across parties and where you can select specific um, candidates or where you can, um, among a list of candidates of the same party, can select one or many candidates. So it's, it's very, um, a very highly, um, um, there's high effort involved with, with the counting. And um, what, what they do is they still mark the paper ballots, with the, um, the traditional paper ballots, but they use a um, a, a, this digital pen with the optics in the front and the, 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 paper, the, the ballot paper is mark, marked with a dot pattern and that allows the pen actually to recognize where it's writing and you can uh, apparently address um, s many square kilometers with that method. Um, so then in um, what the voter does, he marks the, pa the, the paper with a pen and then he puts the paper into a ballot box um, just as in traditional paper-based elections, but he also puts the pen into a docking station and the vote, the electronic representation of the vote is unloaded into a computer and it then at the end of the election day is counted. And if you make your tick not in one of the circles but somewhere, or if, if there's any uh, amb ambiguous votes, then um, these ambiguous votes are presented to election officials for manual classification. In the end, um, the paper ballots are not counted, but they provide a physical audit trail. So they could be counted um, if there's any doubt. Now, th that's an improvement compared to NEDAP, but it doesn't solve the problem because um, the ho approach Hamburg is taking is um, the digital vote will, will be binding, not the paper vote, and there will be no recounting um, except when they first are going to use it have said that in next year's election they are prepared to, to count a 1.5% 1, 1 sample of the paper ballots just to ensure that everybody can trust the system, but then in future they will drop the recount and the digital vote will be the, will be the only uh, vote that counts. So in fact, um, it's just another user interface. Um, it's, it's a black box voting system, um, no other, no, not different, not any different from, from NADAP. Um, it's, it's basically an, an optical scanning system, but with a, with a difference to traditional scanning systems that, that you can't rescan. So you only have one go and you scan while you elect. So you can't even, you, 
can't even rescan re with different devi devices to do an automatic recount. Yeah? Um, the, the question was, uh, because you have the paper, you could put the paper into um, a, a different scanner. Is that the question? Um, um, yes, you could. Um, what they do in Hamburg is um, they, just, they don't just take a sheet. Um, they, they put it in a brochure, there, and they have a description of each candidate. So you have multiple pages. You would need to, flip page, you would need to have a scanner that flips pages. Um, I guess that's, that is technical feasible. Um, but it's probably um, disproportionately expensive, so I doubt that's going to happen. Um, the interesting thing they did in Hamburg is they actually prepared a common criteria protection profile for the pen. So we actually know the assumptions in, in terms of, um, of the safety com uh, concept um, that are underlying the security concept. And there's some very interesting statements in there, because one of the statements is, is it's assumed that the election committee is reliable and does not tamper with the digital pen. It's assumed that attempts to tamper can only occur in the polling booth. So it basically says um, there's not going to be any tampering, except by probably by voters, but not by insiders. And that goes into more detail. They say um, personal uh, the, the personnel, like administrators and election committees, they never do act uh, careless or hostile. Um, they follow instructions, they never do any errors. And there's not going to be any malicious software on the voting devices. So, um, in fact, the digital pen is secure by assumption. Um, e counting. Um, is, is something that I only recently um, got on my radar. Um, tr traditionally, um, well, in, in areas where you have complex voting systems, like, like um, regional elections in southern Germany, um, most munci municipalities still vote with paper ballots, but some cities use um, electronics to actually count the votes then afterwards. So um, the, the votes are e either manually entered into a PC um, or captured with a bar scanner, a, a, a bar scanning a, a barcode which is next, next to the um, party. That's something they use in Bavaria, for example. Um, so the capturing of the votes is observable, but not as the counting. And obviously, as you can't count as quick um, as electronics, you won't be able to follow. Um, the, the counting, and you won't be able to see whether that has been counted honestly or not. And um, th that recently got quite some media attention in Italy because there they did some e counting experiments and got significant um, international attention um, th this month actually um, because there's evidence for tampering in the 2006 parliamentary elections using e counting. Um, that demonstrates the risks involved um, with, with e-counting, and Italy, at least, is staying away from um, e-counting in future, they say. Um, in Germany, e-counting doesn't happen with um, national elections. Um, we, we've only seen that with, with regional elections, for example, in Hessen, where I live. Um, the reason why they do that is, is um, the, the complex election law. In a city like Frankfurt, you have, 50, uh, you have 70 votes to spend, um, and count, obviously. Um, that, that's one per seat in the uh, committee you are electing. And um, you, you can accumulate up to three votes per candidate, and you can vote across multiple parties, and that obviously um, that, that creates hassle with counting. Um, so how can they actually count that in a democratic matter? Um, and, and what have they done to, to make that countable or handable? If you look at the Hessian uh, uh, Regional Electoral Act, it says, the law says, after election, the election committee determines the result by counting the votes in public. So that, that, that doesn't seem to be very uh, ambiguously. Um, in the, 
on the federal state level that by the um, th th that is implemented as uh, they actually say exp they are explicit on that the election um, committee has to determine the results non-stop without interruption after the um, end of the election in the polling station. Now, um, with, with regional elections, they've changed their mind on that. So, um, the, the um, regulation says um, the election committee can decide to postpone count counting, so they can continue counting the day that after or the, the next day. Um, that typically takes um, two to three days in, in a typical city in, in Hessen. Um, so, how can you still observe that? Um, and, and they also say the votes can be counted in an automatic procedure um, if the security and the reliability of the determination of the election result is ensured. But there's no further, that doesn't go to any further details. So, um, whenever you find that your election counting software is um, safe or um, reliable, that you can use it. And there's no certification, there's nothing. You can count where, when, and how you want. So what's next? Um, that's the legal action um, that I've taken and others have taken to, to um, contest the national elections, the Bundestag elections of 2005. And as I said before, um, in um, mid-December, the Bundestag has rejected the case. Um, based on the recommendation of the um, scrutiny committee. Um, they say the case is obviously unsubstantiated. Um, th this now opens for me the, ne the next step, which is the constitutional court. It needs to be filed by mid-February. Um, and three of the four contestants are going to the next round. Um, I need a, we need a minimum of 100 signatures um, for the constitutional court to um, formally accept the case, and um, the reason for that is that, that the Constitutional Court is protected from anybody raising anything with them, um, so th that, that should provide evidence of public interest, and I would appreciate if I could collect more than 100 signatures um, to actually uh, provide that evidence. So, um, if, if you are um, a German citizen and um, want to support me, uh, uh, which I w would, would like to ask you here is um, please sign today. I, I bought some forms um, or you look, or look for additional details on my, on my homepage, ulrichwiesener.de. Um, procurement of election devices continues in Germany. Um, NEDAP, NEDAP is busy selling and there's evidence um, that, that many committees deciding on the purchase have never heard of any legal or technical challenges. Um, um, it's, it's local elections that drive the uh, procurement. So, um, for example, Hessen 2006 elections, uh, within um, half a year since the Bundestag elections, um, the uh, number of voting machines in Hessen raised from 100 to 300. Um, cities currently discussing um, purchasing NEDAPs are Cottbus, Herner and Westfalen, but Oehenhausen. Um, and um, when you speak to these peoples, people in these cities, you don't have the impression that they've ever heard of, of the NEDAP pack or that they ever Googled for NEDAP or for e voting. Um, so uh, th there's quite some awareness to, 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 uh, to rise here in Germany. Digital pen is currently not, there's no permission to use that in national election, elections yet. But um, when we have the Hamburg example and when they've co successfully conducted elections in Hamburg, I guess that's something uh, that is going to happen. And, and Bremen is about to change the Electoral Act for local elections. They're introducing a voting system similar to the one in Hamburg. And um, there's already people saying that the digital pen will follow the new electoral law in Bremen. What, ele what elections are uh, coming next in Germany? Um, there's no major computer-based elections in 2007. There might be some 
elections of mayors, regional elections, um, but, but uh, nothing major. In spring 2008, there's quite some elections coming up. Um, there's um, um, local elections in Hessen and Northern Westfalen. There's the digital pen election in Hamburg in 2008. Um, and in autumn 2009, there's the next Bundestag election when hopefully we have been, we, we got rid of NEDA by then. In Europe, this spring, um, there's elections in Ireland. And um, that's the country where they have um, NEDAPs across the country, but where the use is suspended. The government is currently still optimistic to use the NEDAPs in the next election for the European Parliament in 2009. Also, next year, summer, um, elections in Belgium and France with different penetrations of, of voting machines. And that, that's just rough numbers, so uh, might be more in Belgium and might be more in France, meanwhile. And, and then next major European election, European election, of, uh, election of the European Parliament in spring 2009, um, where NIDAPs and other e-voting devices will be used across Europe. So what, what is on the to-do list? Um, in Germany, at least, the penetration is still relatively low. Um, cities are busy buying, and US vendors like es and are at the doorstep. Um, what, what, what we need to do is, is raise awareness. Many politi politicians and journalists are still in unaware of e-voting because it's not happening in their city. Um, they're, or they're not aware of the related issues because they don't understand, for example, the technical issues. Um, so vendors still get away with, um, with their message that e-voting is the modern approach to um, elections. Um, and I guess the discussion needs to leave the IT corner. If you look at the media coverage over the last couple of months, at least in Germany, um, we, we never got out of the computer or internet pages in the newspapers. This is not a technology topic, it's a political topic, and this is where it needs to be um, discussed. Um, procurement is a local process, so um, make sure your city understands the issues. Um, otherwise, they just might buy these things being unaware of the issues. Um, tell your member of parliament that you insist on election transparency. Um, do we need to start a campaign? And, and if we do, um, should it be European, should it be national? Um, can existing organizations like the CCC or other organizations, political parties pick up? Um, I'm Still unsure on this, probably something for the discussion. Um, I guess um, regional election systems with 70 votes per voter need a re review. Election systems need to be efficient. There needs to be a reasonable effort in um, election or in, in the involved counting. I guess there are still possibilities to, to influence um, the, the, the parliamental. Uh, to, to select, to, to provide an re appropriate level of selection um, w without creating such a hassle with the counting. Um, don't know where to start. There's lots of stuff to do. Um, this is my last page. Who can we trust? Um, in elections, public control, not trust. Um, implements the integrity of the election. So trust in election officials or vendors is desirable, but not an appropriate approach to ensure democratic elections. Trust in election officials might be appropriate in most cases, but it's, it, it can't be the only measure which ensures the integrity of an election. Thank you. Um, okay, which of us is on first? <laughs> okay. I have a short question, um, which is, uh, don't you believe that this may drive uh, governments into inter real internet voting, people voting at home? Sorry, I didn't understand the question. 
Well, there, there are some thoughts whether people in the, this, in the internet age, where, where internet is so pervasive at home uh, with people, that they should really vote at home and not in an election office with, a bit of some, with some weird kind of machine. And uh, do you think that's a favorable idea that, that we push the governments perhaps in that direction? Well, well, I guess internet voting is the ultimate black box voting, um, where you don't even see the black box anymore. <laughs> and um, on, on top of that, um, the actual um, voting process is not in the public anymore, so the voter might be subject to um, social or um, any, any pressure. He's able to sell the vote because he's able to elect in presence of somebody else. No, I don't think remote e-voting is an option. Okay, I've been an election official for the past two elections here in Germany, and I can only strongly suggest to everyone here in this room to volunteer to be an election official. I've found it very interesting to see that many people actually will vote invalid. They'll scrawl, all politicians are criminals, or other kinds of things across their ballots. And my question is, are they being disenfranchised by these e-voting mechanisms because they don't have a way of doing all, none of the above or of leaving the ballot blank? Um, I can only comment on the situation in Germany. Uh, and, and with the NEDAPs, you, um, you have a button to vote invalid. So you still have the, the, the right to, to vote invalid. Yes, you can do so. Um, with a digital pen, you can obviously scribble all over the, the ballot paper, and that would mark your ballot invalid. So um, I, I, I think that, that issues with inability to vote invalid uh, will, will not stop e-voting. Could you imagine safe and transparent and good e-voting systems, or should we oppose e-voting in general? Um, well, I have no problems with technology, and if there is a voting system, an electronic voting system, which ensures secrecy and transparency and auditability, um, why not? But I haven't seen one. I wanted to um, quickly talk a bit about um, the experiences um, with electronic voting in, in um, Brazil. It's very critical because um, uh, today, or uh, for several years already, the election is totally um, electronic with, with voting machines, black box machines. And uh, there was a, a movement against it, but um, um, we couldn't um, do much, and the media did not uh, really help. And um, so, um, <clears throat> in, in Germany, um, if we really do something, I, I think we we still can stop it. But um, uh, I am telling this about Brazil, because there the war has been lost, and I, I have no idea when maybe we get a, a second change to to, pro, to um, ban to ban it. And I also wanted to um, mention a German um, website about um, electoral reform. It's www.wwww.wahlreform.de. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to do this in German because I'm not too firm on electoral terms in English. Um, mit diesen Regionalwahlen, die scheinbar zu kompliziert sind, wo Sie gesagt haben, ja, wahrscheinlich müsste man da es wieder einfacher machen, ist nicht ganz so einfach. Gerade in Mehr Demokratie hat in Hamburg zum Beispiel dieses kompliziertere Wahlrecht durchgesetzt mit dem Kumulieren und Panaschieren als Förderung der demokratischen Mitwirkung, weil es nämlich die Macht der Parteien begrenzt, die vorderen Listenplätze zu setzen. Das wieder zurückzunehmen, ist natürlich auch wieder Blödsinn. Also da kommen auf einen Nebenschauplatz, den man lieber mal außen vor lassen sollte. <lacht> Ja, ähm, ich bin mir nicht sicher, ob man wirklich 70 Stimmen braucht, um ähm, auf, auf die Listenzusammensetzung Einfluss zu nehmen. Also let, letztendlich kommt dann im Schlepptau ähm, solcher Wahlsysteme dann auch immer das E-Voting, offenbar zwangsläufig. Und deswegen ähm, 
habe ich, ich habe im Moment da keine Lösung für, aber ich denke, man muss sich die Effizienz solcher Wahlsysteme, also wie effektiv kann ich eigentlich Listenzusammensetzung beeinflussen, in Abhängigkeit vom Zählaufwand, das muss man sich sicherlich genauer angucken. Also in der Hinsicht möchte ich noch sagen, dass in der Schweiz im Gemeinderecht ist das gleiche System auch und das sind keine elektronischen Wahlen und auch momentan nicht in Diskussion einzuführen. Also es ist auch möglich mit normales Zählen auch so ein kompliziertes Wahlrecht zu haben. Um, can I maybe um, share my uh, experience about voting in Switzerland? Um, in Geneva, there is a project of uh, e-voting uh, through internet, and uh, the background of the project was uh, led by a politician, and it was a problem of ego management at the basic. They uh, mandated uh, a, a private company to develop a software. The software wasn't accessible. I mean, the source code wasn't accessible in the first time. After, they asked another company to make an audit of the system of e-voting, but they asked that company to sign up a non-disclosure agreement. So the company cannot communicate on the uh, security gap they found on the e-voting system. And the politician said, okay, if you said there is a security gap, you have to prove it. And because the company was si sign up uh, a non-disclosure agreement, it wasn't possible. After, they released the code. But there is a code on um, print on the red papers with the small characters. So you can accept uh, to the code if you sign up another non-disclosure agreement. So I think the big problem of an e-voting is the way the project is lead. Every city which are developing e-voting system believe they can do it by their own. And uh, it's a community problem, it's a citizen problem. And uh, I don't think a, a city can develop a good system by their own without to take into account community. I don't know what is your point on. I think all city working on this kind of voting system have to be together. Well, I can only com comment on the legal situation in Germany. The, 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 um, it, it is the city which is responsible for, the, for conducting the election and they, they make the decision whether they want to do that electronically or on paper. So um, there, there is no way to put that into a centralized approach in Germany. It's just a consequence of the federal system. So I think we are um, quite a bunch of uh, people with uh, um, some uh, technical competence and also some conscious about uh, e-voting and um, democratic rights. Uh, so do you think it's an option for us to set up a list of requirements um, for e-voting that can be easily understand uh, by as well by technicians as well as uh, politicians and uh, the general uh, citizen? Or is this uh, completely the wrong approach uh, to set up something like uh, such requirements at all? Um, well, th there's some requirement lists around and when you have a look at these lists, the main issue is consistency. For example, there's a, a list of the um, European Commission on um, requirements for electronic voting, and th that is a list that at the first glance is um, quite impressive, at the second glance, glance is highly um, um, inconsistent. Um, I'm not sure if there is a consistent approach to that, and uh, if, if you not get into the, in, into the trap of just generating another list, um, which, will, which nobody will follow. Might be worth a try, though.
another another idea would be to set because some of the problems seem to be that the vendors of the voting machines try to protect their business secrets and therefore do not publish how the inner workings of their machine. One could imagine that uh, the community sets up an open system that at least works at, as good as possible and to show an alternative. Well, if, if you had an open source or public domain e-voting system, um, you would still not able to tell if in the actual election place um, that is the system that is running or it's just a system that's pretend to be that system. You could imagine technical, I mean, you could have signatures of, of the code that's running and... Not, not everybody can take his laptop uh, to the voting booth. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess that's, that, that is the system, uh, uh, um, that, that is the, 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 the problem. You really have to have a trustworthy environment to do the integrity checks. And if you just go to the polling place and um, have, have the machine sitting in front of you, um, you, you won't be able to tell. I, I don't know how you would. Um, it won't be possible to ensure that your check is correct because maybe you can get a checksum from the flash, uh, but the box has a modified processor with its own ROM that modifies on the, f the code on the fly, or you have a prepared uh, ROM that changes its contents after some special hidden access sequence or so. So it's not possible without uh, taking the whole machine into a laboratory and take all its part, uh, taking it in its part and so on. It will take weeks and a bunch of experts to be sure that the machine is not modified in any way. So it's simply impossible uh, to make an unmodifiable voting machine. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Um, and if you read, um um, Rob's paper on, on the NEDAPS, um, it, it's basically outlining that it's, it, it's always going to be a race between the, the guy who was trying to temper and, and the people who are trying to prevent that. Um, and and you, 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 with every security level, you just bring it to the next level of escalation. Um, I have a question regarding the, the citizen rights. Um, is it um, f for the for the sanity of the of the elections? Is it uh, um, trustable to delegate uh, your the, the 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 right of the citizen to be able to control the election to some experts? Because this is the the, the, the key of, of the evil thing is is that basically you you trust someone else to make the job of controlling the elections and. That's somehow dangerous because this uh, trustable authority can be um, the ministry of whatever. And I don't think for controlling the elections, it's, it's uh, something that you should delegate. Yeah. I fully agree on that. That should not be, you should not be able to delegate that right to a small group of people. It's just not appropriate for democracy. Is there any more questions? So I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert in the field of cryptography, but are you aware that there are cryptographic voting systems? Have you um, heard about that? Um, th there's some cryptography used in, mainly in uh, internet voting systems, as far as I am aware of. But um, you, you can't, as a voter, you will never have access to that. Um, you always need to trust somebody who, who, who provides the, the, the keys or who runs the machines. As, as a voter, the encryption doesn't solve the problem. 
I'm not completely sure about that. As I told you, I'm, I'm not a, an expert, but I, I, I believe there is work around that has some desirable um, properties and that might improve and that might improve voting in general by means of crypto cryptography. But it always requires an, an authority that you trust in. And trust is not the right approach to election integrity. It's transparency, not trust. Uh, on that topic, uh, topic um, you would have to trust the hardware in, in the last case. So uh, data machines have a checksum which I print out, but it's just bullshit security in any uh, cryptography implemented in any um, black box system would be also some kind of bullshit security. Uh, it, it just moves the uh, trust situation to the hardware or any si uh, signing um, authority. Yeah, I just, I, I would be cu curious to, to see any any concept that really improves the integrity of the election, but I haven't seen one. Well, after all, we all discuss, uh, discussing technical aspects of e-voting, e but for me, the real question is, why do we need e-voting? It's just a crap. <laughs> we can use no development costs uh, for zero bucks. We just buy ten thousands of papers, make a cross, and it's finished. It's all that. It's nothing more. But my first question is: Do you do you trust in the voluntary people who helps in the local uh, local voting offices? My second question is, are there any alternative designs for e-voting? Because I think um, so as the idea of the politicians to, to realize e-voting in, in a way whatever. And uh, the discussion, may, maybe the discussion is, and, uh, is not, uh, will not be ended before there's an e-voting in the system. <coughs> how it can be. I'm, I'm not sure if I understood the first question correctly. Uh, the what, first question, question, do, I, do I trust the election officials? Yeah. Um, well, in most cases, I think uh, we, we can trust them, um, but that the trust is mandatory because there's no other um, measure to control the election integrity, that's just not appropriate. That, that the administration, um, so certi cert that the administration it certifies itself to be um, trustworthy, that, that is something that is appropriate for countries like Belarus, but not for democracies. And in terms of your second question that was related to um, w whether I have seen election systems that enhance Security? Yeah. No, I haven't. Uh, in terms of e-voting e systems, right? No, I haven't. And I'd, I'd like to see some, but I haven't. But maybe there can, can be a design pattern for, to, to realize a system like that, or not? Well, you, you will always be... During the election, you can never look in, into the box, and you can never see what, what's happening inside, so... Um, even if it's public domain, if it's open source, how do you know that's running? Um, okay. uh, there was a suggestion about that cryptographic voting systems. I looked at some of them. Some, uh, there are some in use. Uh, the Gesellschaft for Informatik each, uh, uses them. And they, all of them, they either need that you trust the voting machine or the server, or they give up secrecy to make, uh, to give you control. You can control what you voted, but you give up secrecy. 
And when I looked at those designs, it seems that there is no way to, uh, to guarantee all those three principles you need without having a physical device like a paper that is put in a box. You can use machines to fill out the, that paper, but the voter has to, to, uh, the possibility to look at it. And you can use machines to count them, but you, have, you need the possibility for voters to recount it in a physical form. And I have seen no ideas for systems that uh, are secure and that don't, uh, don't, uh, don't involve paper. Yeah, I agree. And um, I think that's just an unsolved problem. And I'd, I'd like to be proven wrong here. But, but I just don't think that uh, in the moment there's a solution for um, in an e-voting system fulfilling all these three requirements at the same time. And um, I, I think that discussion needs to be taken away from the internet voting enthusiasts, or at least um, people who are more critical need to, need to get involved here. Hello. I think that the paper being referred to is uh, by Adi Shamir. I'm not entirely sure because I didn't do the research, but um, it works by printing on a um, transparent strip of paper from two sides um, a random pattern that when those two pieces are combined, you can read it, and when they're taken apart, you can't read it anymore. Oh, it's David Chom. Okay. Have the other person explain it. Rob, do you want to explain how that works? Um, yes, it's very complicated and it involves lots of cryptography. Um, you will get to that later. Okay. Yeah, I think we should make a stop here to have the break. And there's another talk on the same topic by Rob just after the break. And I will encourage everybody to participate here on the list. So if you want to support... Um, Ulrich's um, Klage, then please go over here and sign. It's only for Germans. <laughs> Thank you very much.